today I would do some summer sausage with jalapeno and high temp cheese. And we're just going to use all of the uh, meat that we have left over from last year's hunts, which would be deer. And we have some pork in there as well. Uh, 16 pounds of deer. And I have 15 pounds of pork. So with it definitely still being somewhat frozen, it's fine. It just, we'll just cut it and make it fit into the grind. So the grinder I have is a uh, one horsepower Cabela's grinder. The problem with this grinder is it gets hot. It gets really hot from the motor here. So all this gets pretty hot. So the quicker you are, the better. If you're gonna be while doing it, throw a gel ice pack or you can buy the ice packs from Cabela's, but the gel ice packs are a lot cheaper. So you just put it right around here. It keeps it pretty cold. As long as it stays cold up here, you're gonna be fine because you obviously don't wanna be cooking meat while you're grinding it. And another problem we have is when you're doing chunks of meat, which is what the pork is in, sometimes squirts out a bunch of blood and meat everywhere. So I just use parchment paper. And I just wrap it three pound shoot here, pinch it into the bin, basically giving it a bib. That's all you're doing. But it works really good. Keeps the meat going this way. Although sometimes it goes this way and there's nothing you can do about that. So we will start with the pork here. Uh, oops, yeah, it's nice falling off everywhere. That's good, we want it cold. Pull some pieces off, pull them off. See, it's just in chunks like this. What I do with the pork is I do uh, half pork to half game meat, whatever animal you're using. And with the pork half, I will do a quarter to a third pork fat to pork meat. So half pork, half deer. Let's just say we're using deer, which we are. Now that pork half, I will do a quarter to a third fat in that pork meat. And I find that even with like a gamey deer, it doesn't really show up as much. And with the deer that tastes good, I mean, you're not killing it. You still get a good deer flavor and uh, turns out Pretty damn good meal. I'll just use this. Just start cutting off pieces. Cuts pretty good. And nice and cold. It'll grind really good with it being so cold too. The problem is when you're doing it with this kind of texture of being frozen, you're gonna get extra moisture in the meat. But come putting the seasoning in, it won't be such a bad thing because it'll get super tacky and it won't go through the stuffer as well. See, that's what I mean. You get like a quarter or a third fat and then the rest of the meat. Pretty good flavor. You put too much fat into your sausage, it'll be really, really mushy when you're trying to eat it. And it's, it's just too rich. So you gotta keep the fat of pork under control. And with the deer, I don't use hardly any fat from the deer. I just don't like it. It's kind of waxy. So we stay away from it. We trim it up uh, to almost be like extra lean deer meat. And you find when you're butchering here and cutting up the meat, you don't like stuff and you got dogs, just give it to them and they'll eat it. So here's another good example of quarter or third fat to the rest pork meat. See how it marbles through it? Mostly meat, a little fat. That'll be a good tasting piece, right there. So we'll continue to do the deer here. Like I said, it's all ground. All the blood that's in the bottom. I like to bleed that out. Cut a little hole down there and uh, let it all drain out as much as possible. Because that deer blood can actually carry some of that game flavor too. It's unpleasant.
here. I'm gonna drain all that out. Clearly it is already, so get that out of there. Tastes better in the long run. So if you're wondering what kind of bags we use, it's it's a four mil or three mil uh, vacuum bag here. And we'll, we'll pack them up and label them, obviously what the meat is and, and how much meat is in there so it's easier come time to pick it out of the freezer. And uh, we've had this kind of bag keep the meat good for about three, four years even. It does last quite a while and uh, the stuff that's wrapped at the butchers is very comparable. But this bag, it's, it's super easy to use once you get the investment of the vacuum packer. Hopefully you can find it on sale. Um, it's, it's well worth the money. Well, I've got the deer meat all ground up along with the pork. I'm gonna run it through one more time through the coarse blade and uh, then I'll start mixing seasoning and adding water and stuff in the cases. But uh, I mean, this looks pretty good. It's nice and red. That's that deer meat. And then underneath, you get that, that nice bright color of pork in there. So just imagine what this is gonna taste like. So I'm not sure if you can see it or not. The, the shoe here where it's coming out of, um, it's got a lot of condensation going on there. I mean, which is great because I am room temperature and it's got condensation on it, which means it's cold here and it's working the room. So it being cold here is great. That's what you want with your meat when it goes through there. Just keep it cold. If you're not really seeing that, you might want to throw all the meat back in the freezer or something just to get it really cold again. And uh, play it safe that way. So this kit is a uh, high mountain kit. Uh, it runs for about 40 bucks anywhere I go. And uh, it, it's a good kit. Thing is with kits like this, is you're gonna pay a lot of money for the box and everything else that's inside of it. So that's that's the one thing I don't like about buying kits is you're paying for everything it comes with as opposed to just paying, you know, 10 or $12 or $15 for the seasoning. You're paying for the box, paying for casings, which obviously you're gonna need here, and all the seasonings, I think I said that, and the instructions you can look up, the box itself, I mean, it, it certainly isn't $40, and I understand companies need to make money, but I would soon rather pay less money for the same flavor without a box. I mean, casings, you can find these at any butcher shop or butcher wholesale place. It's again with the seasonings too, but these kits have never been bad. These have been really good. The High Mountain has a really good line of stuff. So today, this is what I'm gonna use. So you've got uh, your cure. When you mix your cure, um, do it at the very end, put all your seasoning in. Mix all your seasoning, then put your cure in. That way you get an even distribution of all the seasoning and then the cure. So if you're finding that when you cook your meat, it comes out gray, it's because it's got no cure. Cure will make that nice red color meat when you're done cooking it. So again, if if you have gray meat, there's no cure. If you want that red meat, it uh, doesn't matter what meat you use, if you want red, the cure will do that for you. To mix it, um, I have this fancy tool. I don't know if you can recognize what this tool is. I don't know if it's a big secret or something that told me about it, but this thing is amazing. You're looking at 20 bucks, maybe 30. Or you can get a meat tumbler, sure, go pay two, 300 bucks, whatever you want. And uh, the cleaning on that is, uh, on a meat tumbler, is, is it's gonna take you a bit, where this, I mean, you're 30 bucks, and to clean it, you're two minutes. It, it is a great tool. Um, you gotta run it in reverse, though. I find it mixes way better when it's in reverse. Yeah, I've just got it reverse. You can use, just push down as you go, and then just like piloting holes, you're just gonna keep going down. So again, just do the pilot hole thing. You can see how everything's getting nicely seasoned. All right, I'm gonna do the cure now. Just a pack at a time. And sprinkle it all throughout. Pretty, it looks pretty easy. 
So with this, I'm just gonna do one, mix it, and then do the other and mix it. Great, now that's all mixed up, and I got the water in there. It's, meat's looking good. It's, it's, not, it's not slimy, but it almost looks wet, I guess you could, but it's not soaking. Like it's just, it's got moisture in it. And uh, that's what I like to do with meat so it's not super dry, like I was saying with the deer. Um, now we're gonna add some jalapenos. So this is gonna be, uh, so these are all dried, dehydrated jalapenos, which is what you get with these guys and their jalapeno kit. I think I just sniffed the jalapeno. Oh. <laughs> All right. Yeah, there's uh, yeah, yeah. So these, I'm gonna put a cup. <laughs> wow, that really hit me hard. Woo. Yeah, this, this is gonna be good. Um, I'm gonna put a cup of jalapeno into the entire 30 pounds of uh, meat and uh, see what it looks like in the meat. Best way to do it is to kind of judge the meat when it's mixed with what you're mixing. If you don't see it in the meat, you're probably not gonna taste it too good. You wanna be able to see what you're adding into the meat in order to taste it, if that makes any sense to you. Anyways, we're gonna try one cup here and see what it looks like. If you spill a little on the meat, it, does, it doesn't matter. It's, it's going in anyway, right? So, try a cup here. Yeah, I'm not a huge heat fan, but I do like like a little heat, some spice. <laughs> There's that dust again. <laughs> All right, I'll sprinkle this in here. Mm, it's, it's gonna be good. Wow, stuff's good. Yeah. All right, so there's, <laughs> wow. So there's half, half a cup of jalapeno. Wow, I really cleaned your sides. So now I'm just gonna mix this <laughs> and see what I see in the meat. So you don't see, you see a little jalapeno? There's a bit in there, but I'd like to see just a little bit more in the meat. So I don't think this is gonna be enough, enough flavor and enough heat. All right, see so you got some seeds in there. Get a little green in there. It's looking pretty good. So I'm gonna stop at one cup. So here's the high temp cheese. So this stuff, you're, you're not gonna get away from it. I mean, this stuff, it just, it's, ex it's expensive, okay? But how good do you want your stuff, right? I mean, it's, it's, it's worth it. This stuff's amazing. Here's one cup, two cups, three cups. Let's see where four cups leaves us. quite a bit of cheese in the side there and the seasoning for the jalapenos looks to be in there too. So try this out. Hmm. Wow. Wow this, this is really good. Okay I got the casing soaking it's been approximately 10-15 minutes. The reason why you want to soak these is because Hear that? It's pretty dry. So if you don't soak them, when you put the meat in, it'll actually shrink. Or the, the casing will swell, sorry, and then it'll look like the meat is shrinking. So you don't get that uniform salami uh, if you don't soak them. So if you soak them, it just feels like, it's like plastic. It's, it's a little more pliable, I guess. I believe these are two pound or one and a half pound casings. So I don't know if you're counting, that's probably coming up on 10 seconds there and you got a pound and a half salami right there. That's it. Just like that. Super easy. I always leave a couple inches at the end so that you can twist it. Right? And then you grab that string that we cut off before 
put it on here, and I wrap it. This looks good. Let this smoke for two hours. It's on a smoke setting right now. Uh, lower temperature, 160 and under is great for smoking 160 and more. You're gonna start closing up the meat and you won't get that smoke in there and you'll almost get like a, a metallic taste if you cook it too quick and try to keep smoking. So you smoke at a low temperature, it permeates the meat way better and uh, then you turn up the heat later. 200, 220 tops, 220. Uh, 200 is a great temperature to cook this stuff at. If you go too hot, say 250, you're gonna blow these casings apart. You're gonna lose all your flavor and all that grease and everything that's supposed to stay in the meat, you're gonna lose it. It's all gonna come out. And not only that, you'll probably flare up the barbecue and, and light the thing on fire, if not wreck. But if you don't, I mean, you're gonna wreck all the other stuff because those will catch quite easy too. So low temperature, that's key. So we'll open this up here and pop this right into the middle one uh, right here. Okay, so that's in there. Yeah, these things look amazing. Absolutely amazing. <sighs> Can't wait to try some tomorrow. Let's see here. Look at that. It's got that nice smoke color to it. From what it was, it was like a bright, bright red earlier. Now it's like a deep brown. So let's see how it looks. My only concern with doing ice water is that it'll hydrate the meat more and make it a little mushy, but we'll see. Well, uh, sometimes you'll get where the paper will stick to the meat when you're trying to peel this off. And right now it's actually peeling off pretty, pretty good. Yeah, this is really good. It's not sticking at all. And a way to tell that you have had too much pork fat is you know, this will be covered in pork fat, like gel, kind of once it cools off. So this is good. It's the right amount. So with mixing the cheese and all the spices earlier, looks like mixed pretty good. You got cheese and jalapeno in every slice. Yeah, that looks pretty good. That's cut nice. It's the way it should be. How firm it is. So I did try uh, not soaking it in water. Not soaking it in water and it really didn't make much difference for texture or anything. So if you don't have a bath with ice in it for the meat, it's fine. It all uh, it all feels pretty well the same. It came out pretty well the same. This looks uh, looks pretty good. Try some. tastes like the jalapeno is definitely in there. It's not overpowering with the one cup in there. It's just enough heat and the cheese in there. You can definitely, you can definitely taste the cheese, but again, it's not too much. It's got a good creamy flavor from the cheese and then the summer sausage in there, all that sweetness. It's good. And there's just a hint of smoke. Not too much. If I were to um, smoke this again on the barbecue like I did, I'd probably do another hour of smoke at least. <clears throat> yeah, this is uh, this is really good. Yeah, I'm sure if you like jalapeno cheese stuff, you're gonna like this recipe too. Well, glad I made all this. You never really know how it's going to turn out until you finish. And sometimes you wish you hadn't made so much, but this time, really, really glad I made 30 pounds of this stuff. And I don't know if you go to the grocery store and try to buy this much. I don't know, I'm guessing 
each foot. Two bucks for 100 grams. So this is probably a pound and a half right here. So you can just do the math. Figure that out for $40 for 30 pounds of this stuff. You're definitely saving money. And this is going to go a long way. And not only for you, but to give it to friends and family and stuff. It's a nice little gift, especially when you tell them that there's a deer and the deer that you hunted is in here.